Welcome to the Tough Decisions Network for Entrepreneurs. I'm Dan Hanford, and my wife, Danae, and I interview successful people sharing stories behind tough decisions that they've had to make along their journey as an entrepreneur. On the podcast with us today is Holly Williams. Holly, welcome to our podcast. Thank you, Dan. It's great to be here. Hi, Holly. And we are looking forward to talking with you today. We want you to get us started by just telling our audience a little bit about yourself, who you are, and where your focus is right now as an entrepreneur. Sure. So I grew up in Texas, but I've been a New Yorker for the last 30 years. And I grew up in the suburbs of Houston and you know, learn to go to school, get good grades, get a job, work your way up the corporate ladder, you know, play well in the sandbox, all of those things. And that's what I did and had a lot of fun along the way and still having a lot of fun. But in reality, I never really fit the mold, right? You know, I was always a little bit outside of the box. My Families all in sororities and fraternities, and I was in the band, you know, and, and I was, you know, if you look back and my, my, what I've been good at, you know, I was the top Girl Scout cookie person, you know, the top band candle seller, you know, all of those things. And, and so I just gravitated into sales and built a career in media and market research and, with companies like Arbitron and Nielsen and which is now part of Nielsen now and, and, you know, Cantar large market research companies. And I was a relatively early employee at AOL. And so that was What's good. That? My daughter will go to college. Right. So I've always, you know, been sort of an entrepreneur, right. At large companies, mm-hmm. but I never, never really had the courage to like absolutely leave the corporate world even though, you know, all signs pointed that way, right? So I guess my biggest challenge is, is has been, you know, overcoming or, or whatever kind of those norms that we're, that at least my generation, I'm 56 years old, that's been my biggest challenge and still is today, you know, of, of this is just not what you're supposed to do, you know, and you're supposed to, you know, get a job and, you know, get promoted and all that stuff, Right. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to dive in a little bit on your background as an entrepreneur because I know what you're currently focused on, what you're currently doing right now. So I want you to share that a little bit as well. But have you had other like entrepreneur things that you started while you were working or has this been kind I of- I have, I have, but I will tell you the big one. The big one was that my company had a reorganization or whatever. It was about 10 years ago and I decided to be a consultant. And I had a lot of companies that wanted me to go, you know, run their sales teams temporarily in between things or go in and and help them reposition their all in the market research area, you know, advertising technology, all of that kind of thing. And I went ahead and I started a media therapist, I called myself, right? And, (laughs) you know, I was mildly successful, but what happened was I, I realized that that it was me they were buying, right? Which is fine. That's all that's all well and good, but that I couldn't scale that, right? And then the other thing is that they all just wanted me to go work for them, right? It was very it's very hard to go be a consultant and and sell, right? Because you're you're wanting to sell for, you know, you can't sell you know, 12 different products that all compete with each other. Right. And so that was a big eye opening experience. And I think the reason it was, and I don't want to call it a failure, but I really did, you know, bumble around a little bit. And the reason I think is that I didn't ask enough questions. There was nobody out there really doing what I wanted to do. And that can be good and that can be bad. Right. Either you've got something truly unique that no one has ever thought of and is everybody is just going to revolutionize the world or the reason nobody's doing it is because it's, it's not really a viable way to do things, right? <laughs> and so mine was the, the second one. <laughs> Well, and I love your story because, you know, I think it it encompasses 
a lot of people that even people that listen to our podcast that you know they they have this this entrepreneurial itch and this entrepreneurial spirit and they just really haven't taken that that full dive and I want you as you've as you've kind of you know done some of these things in the past can you share maybe a tough decision that I like to call the sore thumb tough decision that did not have that good of an outcome. That was a really tough decision. It's not necessarily a bad, like you regret it or anything, but it's a, it's a not so good outcome. And maybe some of the lessons you learned through that decision. So I think that probably the, the thing that I, and not that I really regret it. It's just that I had some opportunities early on when I was doing this thing to go, people I said, you know, wanted to, to hire me, right. Full time. Well, don't, we want, we love you as a consultant, but what we want to do is lunch. You know, so I turned down some positions that like Yahoo in the early days, <laughs> you know, <laughs> where, where, you know, I made enough money where my daughter will go to college and all of this. And it's been able to get me where I am now. Right. But it's probably the decisions that I didn't make. And I distinctly remember telling, asking, you know, my circle of trust there that, there's this company called Yahoo and they laughed like Yahoo. What are you talking about? I mean, that's kind of what, you know, in my generation, this whole internet thing was, they thought I was like really crazy even for going to work for AOL when when I did. And it was, it was not at all a total startup, but it wasn't a, a household thing when I went to work there. So if you don't mind maybe diving into that just a little bit, what was it that held you back from those new companies or those different positions? Was it different from what you were currently doing? Was it just that it would have maybe been a move and, and something, you know, that was not a lot of security? What what held you back from those? It was mostly that it wasn't, you know, an established company, this whole idea of at that time, you know, it wasn't an established company. And I was like, running a sales team of like a hundred people at a major company and, and all of that. And so it would have been leaving for a company called Yahoo that at that point, Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, if you'd never heard of that, you'd be going, what, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, who knows how that would have turned out, right? What happened was what happened, right? So I guess the decision not to do that is something I always, you know, I think about it, but I think that, you know, I think that it was, it was, again, if you look at, you know, we, we live, we have patterns, right? And at the end of the day, you know, you have to have a plan B and C, but you have to dive in the water at some point, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was, it just went totally against everything that I, you know, was taught, right? You can't move across the country for a company called Yahoo that nobody's ever heard of, right? They're going to think you were a Yahoo. That's exactly right. (laughs) That's exactly right, you know? So I think that there's some of that going on right now with my decision to uh, become a a full-time real estate investor and spread the word here, but not nearly as much because I have a, I think that secretly deep down, almost everybody wants to work for themselves. I mean, that's, I think even people that, that tell you not to and be careful and all of those things, I think that you know, the, the environment has changed so much in the last 20 or 30 years that it's much more, I think almost everybody's kind of corporate America doesn't have the luster that it had at one point. Yeah. And I think the big thing that when you make, start to make that decision is realizing that you could always go back if things don't work out. So you could always have that contingency plan in place that, you know, push come to shove. If you just really had to go back, you could, you know, someone will hire you, maybe not at the level you were when you left, but at least at some some of a form of a level where you would still be able to make it. Well, exactly. And, you know, I was reading, you know, my favorite quote is, is very few decisions are irreversible. Someone said that to me early on. And, and it's really true. When I moved to New York City, people were like, what are you crazy? Blah, 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 blah. Seriously, this is kind of, because why leave Texas, right? If you grew up in Texas, Texas is the greatest thing. I mean, it's like a whole other country, right? So you don't leave, right? <laughs> and, you know, but it, it took me three days to move, move up to New York. I, I could move back in three days, right? So that was quite comforting at the time. Well, let's shift here a little bit, Holly, and I want you to start to talk about a tough decision that you had to make as an entrepreneur that had a really good and positive outcome and maybe some of those lessons. Well, I think that 
my decision about a year ago to start paying more attention to what I was doing from a real estate perspective and less attention to what I was doing from a corporate perspective. And what I do now is, is I tell my story about the way that we are brainwashed and how to overcome some of those, all of our early training, right? That says, you know, don't invest, you know, stay in the stock market. Private investments are scary. You have to be very careful to not get ripped off. And all of that is true. But if you're dealing with the right people and and that have a track record and, and understand how to analyze investments, you know, it's not that scary, right? And once I began to learn that, and once I began to see how some of the private investments that I was making were impacting my life and those of people I love and, and my friends and family that were asking me, Hey, what is it that you're doing? You know, this kind of has taken on a life of its own and my priorities have slowly, slowly, but surely shifted. And now they've shifted in a big way. So Holly, talk to us a little bit about some of the strategies that you will use when you are facing a tough decision. First, I find people that have been through it and come out the way that I would like for it to come out, right? And also some, some people maybe that have come out the other way. But for the most part, how I live today is really looking at people that have what I want or have been through what I want. And, and I ask, I don't do a, a lot of things in a vacuum today, but I also make sure I talk to the people that have actually done it and not to the people that are afraid to do it. <laughs> If that makes sense. All right. We're going to take a quick break and hear from one of our show sponsors. When we come back, we'll talk to Holly about some of her favorites as it relates to her life as an entrepreneur. Have you ever thought about investing in real estate, but find yourself so busy that you don't have time for it? Do you have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out? At HanfordCapital.com, We help investors with passive real estate investments that project better returns than traditional investment vehicles such as the stock market. If you'd like to find out more about our passive real estate investments, visit HanfordCapital.com. That's H-A-N-D-F-O-R-D Capital.com. We will jump on a call with you to discuss your investment goals and to see if our investments are a good fit for you. This advertisement is not to be construed as an offer or recommendation to buy or sell a security. Visit HanfordCapital.com. And we are back with Holly Williams, and we're going to go through this series of quick questions and answers with you, Holly, that we call the trifecta. And I want you to start us off by telling us about your most favorite technology that you use in business that helps make your life easier every day as an entrepreneur. Well, I'm going to be really simple. It's obviously the big picture is the iPhone, right? I'm not selling Apple, but they sure make it easy for you to stay into their little, in their little ecosystem and they do a good job of it. So what is a favorite quote that you've heard that has helped you as an entrepreneur? If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always gotten. So hmm. if you want to change, you're going to have to do something different and take some action. And what about a favorite book that you have read that has helped you make better decisions? There's a lot of them. I'll go back to the tried and true, the rich dad series. It's never been truer than it is today. And what's the next thing for you right now on your vision or your dream board? So my website is keepmore.com and my big revelation, you know, I live in New York city, especially, you know, it's not a tax haven. Right. And what I've learned over the last couple of years, the last five years actually of, of investing in multifamily real estate is the ability to save a lot on taxes and to make really great returns, right? But it's all about keeping more of your time, keeping more of your money though. And really what I see, what I want to do is build that, build that out. So there are lots of ways other than even real estate investing that you can, you can keep more. There are other kinds of alternative investments that you can do. So I want to build that out. And so, you know, a year, two years, three years down the road, I, I want to be the keep more lady that, you know, everyone talks to when they want to uh, maximize their, their income and minimize their tax liability and what everybody, you know, 
minimize the paying for the streets that aren't getting fixed. <laughs> yeah, well, how can the listeners reach out to you if they're they're interested in that or want to jump on a phone call with you and talk to you further about, you know, whether it be there in a W-2 and trying to transition and getting your, your feedback on that or, or possibly, you know, starting to follow you just some more so they can kind of see what you're getting involved with. Sure. You can reach me at keepmore.com. How did you secure that domain name? Well, it's it's not as hard as you would think. <laughs> That's it, a great domain. So it's a keepmore, M-O-R-E dot com? Yep. Keep more. So that's so that we put those links in our show notes as well. So that as the listeners, you know, want to go back and listen to the episode and, and go to our website, toughdecisions.net and look up the show notes. They'll have the direct links to those various channels to be able to reach out to you and follow you more. And I really appreciate you taking the time to, to be on the podcast with us today, Holly, and I look forward to continuing to follow you and look forward to having you on a future episode as well as you continue to grow. Well, thank you so much, guys, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for listening to the Tough Decisions Network. Be sure to visit toughdecisions.net to gain access to show notes for this episode and to join our free weekly entrepreneur email where we will send you news about the latest technology for your business, inspiring quotes, and the latest books for entrepreneurs. That's toughdecisions.net.